In this episode of Science Foundations, we're answering the question, what are some parts of a plant cell? Some parts of a plant cell include the nucleus, cytoplasm, vacuole, mitochondria, cell membrane, cell wall, chloroplast, and Golgi bodies. To start with, I want to explain kind of some of the differences between plant and animal cells. Animal cells don't have this cell wall made out of cellulose. For that reason, animals need something like a skeleton to stand upright. Looking inside this cell wall now, let's take a look at our different organelles in order. Our first one here is the nucleus. The nucleus of this plant cell is where the commands are given. It contains the DNA, so the reproductive material, but also the DNA goes out and tells the plant how to create things like proteins, everything the plant cell needs to survive and function the way God intended it to. God coded that DNA just right in the beginning so that it can reproduce itself. Then we have cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is the material around all these different organelles. This cytoplasm allows the organelles to kind of, you know, float or gives them their space, but it also helps transfer signals and nutrients or building blocks that the plants need to be able to build different things like those proteins. Then we have the vacuole. This is one area that plant and animal cells are different. Plant cells have to remain rigid. If they get too wilty or limp, the plant will wilt, right? So if a plant doesn't get enough water, it wilts over. Well, part of that is this vacuole remains full and creates pressure that holds the shape of this plant cell out against the cell wall. We have a mitochondria up next. Mitochondria are the power plants of the cell. They take the energy and convert it into something that the cell can use, and they really power everything that happens in here. Now the cell membrane is up next. The cell membrane of a plant cell holds all of those different organelles in their place and provides some structure inside of this rigid cell wall. Remember, the cell wall is a little different than the membrane. The other thing a membrane does for a plant cell is it controls what goes in and out of the cell. Because you wouldn't want everything outside coming to the inside of every cell and vice versa. That leaves us with cell wall. As we talked about, it gives it this structure that's usually angular and made so that plants can kind of build upon themselves. Finally, we have chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are one of those major things that make plant and animal cells different, with the exception of a couple things, because God is creative and he loves exceptions to all of our rules, because his rules are the ones that really count. He has created a few protists and things, so single-celled animals that do photosynthesize, and there's a few animals in the ocean that can, but most animals don't have chloroplasts. Plants do. That's one of the major differences, because Plants can produce energy from sunlight. It's one of the most miraculous things on the planet. And that energy then is there so that we can consume it. God made the world so that it will support life. And he balanced everything just right. And he gave us what we need to live. One of those things are plants. Because last time I checked, I can't just stand outside with my mouth wide open and absorb the sunlight as energy. Well, at least not the sort I could eat. Now comes the Golgi bodies. Those are sort of like the long distance post office of your cell. Anytime you're gonna transport something like fats or proteins out of the cell, they have to be packaged just right to be able to go in and out of that membrane and to go to the right places. So the Golgi body helps transport, package and transport those proteins and fats. In addition to these short videos, we're releasing full lab videos online. They're available by subscription at awesomesci.tv.com. I hope to see you there.